Howdy all, this is Shane, and this is week number two of the In The Blues Mailbag. This is when I take all the questions that I get, or at least some of the questions that I get, and answer them in a video response. I get flooded with emails and questions and comments and all kinds of stuff on all of my thousand plus videos now. It's getting really hard to keep up, and yeah, I thought this would be a good way for the regular subscribers and I to interact a little more, and yeah, basically answer some questions directly to everybody's comments. My computer's just here. I'm gonna be looking back and forth a little bit, going through some of it and seeing you know, what we've got. So I'm gonna start with some YouTube comments. The first one is a little bit different to gear stuff. So this is from Francisco Guerrero. And I know I can't pronounce that last name properly and I apologize. Uh, he asked me where I'm vacationing. I'm actually taking a holiday or a vacation. In Australia, we call it a holiday. To the US, I'm gonna be staying in um, New Smyrna Beach in Florida. I'm gonna be visiting also the largest left-handed guitar shop in the world in Sarasota, Florida as well, which should be fun as I'm a left-handed guitarist. I'm really looking forward to that. Catching up with some friends, also going to Georgia, Texas, maybe Michigan or Chicago, and then over to um, San Francisco and then back down to near Daytona Beach. So yeah, it should be a lot of fun. I'm dying for a break, so yeah, it'll be good. Not a break from this, but a break from the cold weather, my regular day job and yeah it should be a lot of fun so i guess if anyone's in those areas or in you know that was very generalized just there but if you're in the new smyrna beach area or sarasota and there's a jam or a gig and yeah i can come have a jam let me know I'll, i'd love to do that i reckon that'd be a lot of fun so uh yeah keep me posted if anyone is in those areas and probably more details will go up as time goes on father ted Crilly asks me if i used any active mods with my guitars I've never used them. I don't really like the way that, um, say those TBX circuits sound. Personally, for me, I just think it just gets a little bit too weird. Pedals can do all of that kind of stuff, and I think it does it, for me, better than those active mods in guitars. I'm not saying like they're a bad thing. I really love Michael Burks's um, Strat Tone, and he uses active pickups in one of his Strats, or he did, before he passed away, and that's some of my favorite tone of all time, but me personally, I like to keep it fairly simple. Noiseless, as in the Joe Barton pickups, or even the D. Allen pickups, are about as different as I'll go with pickups. I tend to like the more traditional sounds, and humbuckers are plenty gainy anyway for the kind of music I play. I guess if I was playing heavier music, then maybe I'd go ahead and run some uh, active mods, but yeah, not really my thing. Although I did have an Ibanez Sound Gear bass guitar that had uh, like an active boost, which was really cool. So Tim Taylor on YouTube asks me if I could do a video of an inexpensive setup from pedals to amp to guitar that he knows that would sound good for under $1,000, I guess US dollars. So there's two ways you could do this. I think in the US Blues Juniors, they're around four or $500, I could be wrong. So that would be a good choice for an amp. A classic vibe Stratocaster or Telecaster is definitely a great buy. I think they would sound great together and those guitars sound great. If you don't want to go for a Blues Junior, you could get a Fender Mustang 3. I'd much prefer to play a Fender Mustang 3 than a Blues Junior live or at home. It's just the way it is. I reckon I should do a shootout between those two because the Mustang 3 with a good modeling preset set up is hands down the best. In terms of pedals, there's plenty of great inexpensive pedals. If you go the modeling route, you may not even need any actual pedals. You could just use the effects built into the amp, which have all of that stuff already. But if you do choose to go for like a clean channel amp, and then you wanna run some pedals, I got plenty of videos on, on cheap pedals. There's the Moen pedals, M-O-E-N. They make some great stuff. I've actually got some more here today. Um, Daffon pedals sound great and they're really, really inexpensive. Even Behringer pedals make some really good stuff. The TO800, depends on what you mean by pedals. If, if you're just talking overdrives, these are some of the overdrive ones that sound great, that are really not very expensive. You could easily scrape in, I guess even under eight, $900, depending on where you live for that price. I could get a Classic Vibe Strat and a Mustang 3 in Australia for under a grand. It might just be under a grand, but it would happen. There would be no problems there whatsoever. So it just depends if you want to choose a tube amp or a modeling or solid state amplifier. Another great buy is a PV Bandit. If you can get a PV Bandit, those things absolutely kick ass. They play 
every bit as good as any other amp on the market. The, my favorite one's the one with the red stripe. I've had like two of those over the years, I think, and yeah, they're fantastic. They sound great. And PV Bandit, Fender Mustang would be my choice if you're going for a cheaper sort of amp that sounds loud and sounds good. Easily playable. Gigged with both of them a lot. And yeah, I must have done 40 or 50 gigs with a PV Bandit. I loved it. I thought it was great. So hopefully that answers some questions. All right, so North of 50 Now asks me if I could do a video about neck profiles and the differences between them and how it may affect your playing or a technique and basically that's the gist of it. So yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll do that with Dr. Rick. He's a, he's a super nerd about all that kind of technical data about guitar necks. I just pick them up and play them. I do notice a difference when I play them. For me personally, it's more about the frets, not so much the shape of the neck. I mean, I like the neck to be a little bit bigger, but we'll get into it. We'll do a video and we'll compare a few and maybe uh, ask Rick to have a chat about them because uh, yeah, he knows a whole lot more about neck profile stuff than I do. And he, he's, like I said, he's right into it. So he'd love to do that, I reckon. So little shredder dude on YouTube says, so I'm a little confused about the Mustang 3. I have an array of pedals and I'm looking into a budget-ish amplifier. Will the Mustang 3 take compression and overdrive and delay and modulation okay? The answer is it will. Uh, it'll do something different than what a tube amp will do. You may find that the onboard presets sound every bit as good as the pedal going in or sometimes even better. What I have noticed though is the onboard ones don't necessarily boost the volume up as much as using a hardware pedal. That's one thing that I've, I've come to realize lately. If you're using an, a pedal that changes the tone of a clean channel, then it should work fine. If you're using one that just boosts it and tries to push it like making a making more of a hotter signal through the preamp to give you natural clipping, it's not gonna do that. So keep that in mind. That's definitely something to um, take on board. All modulation and time-based effects will work fine, like delay, tremolo, you can use all that stuff with it. It has an effects loop on the back as well. So yeah, you can definitely get the kind of sounds from your pedals just in straight into that amp. The difference is the amp already has all that stuff on board. So it's up to you which one you wanna to choose to use, whether the onboard effects or your external ones. I can't say that they all sound great, um, but the ones I've tried sound fairly good. I've done a video on that recently as well. So yeah, there'll be a video somewhere in the links, maybe in below that will explain that a little further. I've done a shootout against, uh, say, Tube Screamer into the Mustang versus the onboard Tube Screamer, and I, I can't hear a difference. So maybe, maybe someone else can, but... Uh, all right, Aaron Rodriguez asks me to please make a review of the Fender Champion 100. You know what, I actually went to do that. I mic'd it up, I had everything on, I was turned my guitar on and I had no sound. So I thought, oh no, my cable's loose or something's not right, or there's a standby switch that I couldn't find. So I flipped the amp over, I had a look, I checked all the wiring on the speakers to make sure that they were all connected up and it still didn't work. This is brand new. So um, yeah, unfortunately I went to demo the amp, the Champion 100, but it just didn't work. So I might go back and do another one at some stage at the Rock Garage. They've got a couple of those amps. And I was kind of spewing, like I actually really wanted to try it out. That was definitely one of the amps that, of the newer season ones that I really wanted to give a blasting and yeah unfortunately I just I've tried I've tried so when I go back there in a couple of weeks I'll see if I can uh, reshoot that one for you no worries at all so Pablo CZ asks me if I could do a brief walkthrough of the guitars I own and is the classic vibe 60s still part of it here it is it uh, absolutely is still part of my collection I think this guitar not only sounds great it feels great to play the finish is fantastic and I'm hoping that uh, if I don't pick up a, something seriously like nice when I'm away in the US soon, I'm gonna get the 50s one of this, which isn't released in Australia. I'm just gonna get the Squire 50s version, which is much like my other Strat that you've seen in a lot of videos, has the, um, the maple fretboard and neck, and also the um, two-tone, or it's a little bit different. It's like a, a black and yellow kind of finish. Um, strat that Squire make as well. I think these are fantastic and having the noise cancelling on the in-between positions on both pickups is great. I 
think they sound every bit as good as any other Strat I've had in those positions. And yeah, this is, you know, I've gigged with this. I've, I use it for videos. I'm gonna be using it a lot more in the next few weeks on some more Mustang Mondays. So stay tuned for that as well. But yeah, absolutely. I'll do another video down the track. Not much has changed in my collection since my last gear rundown. I'll put a link in the description. You can check that out. So 98 German kid <laughs> asks me, uh, what strings do I use? I use a selection of strings. I'm not really a brand snob when it comes to a lot of stuff, um, especially strings. I go to webstrings.com. I'm not sponsored by these guys. I've been going there for about five or six years, maybe now, maybe longer. I can't really give you the exact date of when I first bought these, but for us in Australia going to a shop, most stores sell strings in Australia for about $12 to $15 a pack, right? On web strings, I can get, you know, four to five packs for that price. L lately in Australia, I can get the Adario strings, which I actually don't mind as well. I either use um, web strings or Diodario um, 11 to 48s and on my, well, on my Telecaster and on my Les Pauls at the time. And my current 335, I play 10 to um, 46. I prefer 11 to 48s. It just sounds better. And I like the feeling of, I like the resistance of it a little more on a Strat. My tally with the vintage fret seems to sort of choke out a little more with the heavier strings. So I've got to get that sorted out. I may have to give it a, a oh, actually like a whole new fret job at some point in time. Robin Browns asks me, uh, why don't you play a Les Paul or SG? I've actually had three Les Pauls. I've had one Tokai Les Paul. Actually, I've had four. I've had an Epiphone Les Paul standard. I've had a Tokai Les Paul, which was made in Korea. I've had a USA Gibson um, with P90s, which was really quite good. I, that's one guitar that, although I didn't end up playing a whole lot towards the end, it was actually really cool. And I had a gold top Les Paul with um, mini humbuckers, which had Unfortunately, a few problems with it in the end. I couldn't play chord without the tuning going out. I'd tune it up, it would go out every chord, and it was like a semitone or half a semitone. It was just, it was irritating. I just loved the sound of it, but my particular one, the nut, had problems, and in the end, I got offered a pretty good price for it, so I, I offloaded it and let them know that, you know, that was the case. But yeah, I mean, it was a beautiful guitar. For me, I've played a lot of guitars over the years, but I just, I love Les Pauls, actually. I think they're a beautiful looking guitar. Um, I just don't think they're really for me. Every now and then I wanna buy one and I wanna play one for a while. But because I'm not a super high gain player, I think that the Strat and the Tally sort of works best for me. Or even the Little Crow guitar, that we cut a live album a little while back and the tone of that guitar was fantastic. So. Yeah, they just feel good for me though, that sort of style guitar and Strats and Tellys are just a no-brainer. They just, they just play well. And in terms of SGs, I've had an Epiphone SG before. It was really neck heavy, so if you let go of the guitar, it would fall, you know, neck heavy down. Just, you know, it sounded pretty cool. And I have an old video of my Epiphone Les Paul versus an Epiphone SG. And yeah, I think, out of the two, I still prefer the Les Paul. The SG's got a little bit more of a woody sound, but the thickness and warmness of the Les Paul is pretty cool. And I think if I was to keep one of all of those ones, it would have been the Tokai Les Paul. The Tokai Les Paul was just the best. I should have kept that. I got it for a bargain as well. I'm an idiot. But anyway, you do that with gear. You go around in circles a few times anyway. So let me know if you've gone through gear circles or anything like that, where you bought something, sold it, bought it, and sold it, and got another one. Let me know because uh, I know I'm hopefully not the only guy who's, you know, got something wrong in here. So over to my Twitter account now, and Dolph Massilio asks me, what is the best modeling amp under 500 or over 500? Please choose this as I am buying an amp soon. If you're after Fender tones, go the Fender Mustang. You know what, um, I've played one of those Cube 80 amplifiers as well and I thought they were really good. They're a little bit easier as it's just like a dial you can switch between sounds. That's a really good buy as well and they're loud, they, they do sound good. 
I think the benefit of the Mustang is you can get different sort of cabinet sizes, 212, 412, single 12 kind of thing. So depending on what kind of music you play, if you're into blues, it's a no-brainer for me. I think the Mustang obviously is the way to go. I've used it live, it sounds good. But the Cube definitely works well. There's some new Blackstar amps as well, which I've been meaning to demo for a while. Um, they actually sound really good. They're not too bad at all. I don't, haven't used them enough to really comment, so I don't know if my answer really helps, but if you're into heavy, distorted tones, I wouldn't go down the Fender Mustang route. I think there's probably other amp companies that do that a lot better. Maybe even the Vox Valvetronics would do a heavier sound better. But if you're into the blue sound like me, or you're into that kind of vibe, check them out. Check out the one that's right for you, the size and the weight and all that. If you can go from a small combo all the way through to a, like a 412 cabinet, which is huge and they're loud. So check them out secondhand too, you might pick them up for a bargain. Java Music and Sound asks me, uh, can I review a product called the Java Amps? and I'd love to do that. So if there's any way you can get one out to me, feel free to send one down. Yeah, I'm happy to send it back as well. So I don't keep all the stuff. I don't charge for videos. So if you wanna send me something down, go ahead and I will absolutely like to do that for you. So send me a message on Twitter, which is where you sent me one, or on um, email via YouTube or on Facebook. So a little bit of information, these videos are gonna be coming out every second Friday, at least Friday in Australia. I'll try and time it so it's at least Friday midnight-ish in the US as well. And Mustang Monday still has quite a few weeks to go and I'm glad everyone's enjoying that. I'm putting a bit of work into those videos and finding the great tones. And I'm excited that I've managed to just make a killer tone tonight for the Mustang 4. So if you're into the Mustang 4s or you got one, you're gonna love this. I haven't tried it on the three yet. I've just finished working on it and it sounds fantastic. So yeah, I think it's, uh, it makes it sound like an amp about 12 times the price. I think it sounds really, really good. So it should be a bit of fun anyway. Um, and my pedal demos, I've actually done quite a lot more than what is up right now. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself with the demos now so I can sort of space them out a little more rather than just flooding you with 15 at a time. So. I've done some um, really cool reverb pedals and tremolo pedals, um, some high-end boutique stuff, as well as sort of that middle ground and sort of the cheaper stuff too. And everything I demo sounds good. There's a few things that I get asked to demo that I get sent and I just don't do it because A, it doesn't fit in with the context of the channel and what I'm sort of doing with, you know, the blues and roots music kind of thing. or just not my style and I don't do it justice. There's been a couple of situations where I've been given a really nice pedal and I just can't use it. It's not my thing. I don't know how to make it sound good. Like a, imagine a ring modulator for a blues player, like the, the bloody, what was it called? The, um, the robot, that kind of thing. It's just nasty, nasty stuff. So yeah, that's another one I might call on Rick for. <laughs> <laughs> so leave all your questions, comments and suggestions below and I'll get back to you in two weeks from now. So two Fridays, I will reply. Thanks again and I'll speak to you all later on. See ya.